Hey, it's Kia, and welcome to A Little Bit Richer's very own Christmas special. I know, I know, it's still November and I'm mentioning the C word, but part of the secret to a cost-effective Christmas, or Hanukkah, or just December in general, is starting to plan early. It can be the most expensive month of the year, so how do we have a great December while still getting a little bit richer? With me to unpack it all is Megan Micklewright. Megan was recently named Financial Influencer of the Year 2023 and is the founder of The Savvy Spender, a platform dedicated to financial positivity. So Megan, traditionally there's been a lot of pressure to spend at this time of the year, but we are starting to see people approach this differently. How's that? I think a lot of people are approaching it differently, especially with the cost of living now. Um, Being more open with their boundaries, setting limits, thinking outside the box, getting creative with presents, making things homemade, doing more secret Santa. Instead of buying everybody a gift in the family, they're passing it forward to charities instead. I was recently just having, well, say recently, earlier, about an hour ago, having a conversation with someone about how my partner's family is so big that they they don't end up doing presents because it will cost them an absolute fortune. There's about 30, 40 of them. And instead, they just do a secret Santa. So instead of one person buying 39 presents, it's one person buying one present. And it's just so much easier on the pocket, isn't it? You know, getting creative with the way you're doing presents instead of just that generic buying for everybody. Absolutely. I think, especially with me and my friends, I think for the past five years, we do like our own separate Christmas celebrations, but we also do Secret Santa because I think when we were younger, we used to think, okay, go buy this person, that person, that list just gets longer and longer goes on. and the price just keeps increasing. But now we decide, right, we're going to do Secret Santa and, you know, you get whoever you get and we have a budget, which is very key because you never know who's earning what. So we just all agree a budget and we all stick to that budget. Yeah. And I think it makes things a lot easier. And that way you're almost forced to think more about the gift that you're giving. Yeah. Especially, like, we've done it where it's only £10 as a budget. So now I'm thinking about the person I've got. What would they love that I can buy for them that is within budget? Or I can make. My friend made me a lovely notebook that I, I still use to this day. So I think it really does get you thinking whilst also not breaking the bank, which is yeah. really important. So I want to ask you then, Megan, do you have any advice for those who are having a difficult conversations with friends and family and if those people may have different approaches to the holiday season? I think that a conversation doesn't have to be difficult unless you make it difficult. If you go in and feel awkward about it, it's automatically going to be awkward. You know, tell people, I've only got this much to spend or I don't want to spend a lot this Christmas, I've got other priorities. At the end of the day, nobody can tell you what your priorities should or shouldn't be. So being clear about it, make sure everyone is on the same page and everyone can respect each other's decisions, really. I was speaking to somebody the other day about Christmas Christmas and just saying that even with family members that are very traditional in setting their ways you know this is how we do things it's good to open their mind up to new ways and it's not about saying this is the way it's done and that's the way we're doing it this year you know have a discussion what do you want to do what what do I want to do and come into compromises and that way you're all happy I love that I think this has been a running theme on the podcast about having conversations I think that's a big thing. We don't always talk about money. So sometimes it can feel as though it's hard to tell people, you know what, I haven't got the money this year or actually can we change what we do this year? But I think, like you said, open up those conversations and it's not as hard as you think it is. It's just as hard as you make it. So Absolutely. I love that when you said that. That stigma, I think, with the cost of living as well, the stigma around money conversations is slowly dying because people that never thought they'd be struggling are actually struggling. And that's where the stigma is being lost because more and more people are talking about money, which is brilliant, really, because there should never be a stigma around it. Exactly. I completely agree with you. Is there a way to have the best of both worlds? So when I say that, I mean, is there a way to have a great Christmas while still sticking to your financial goals? 100%. Absolutely. You can always have the best of both worlds when it comes to spending money and Christmas. You know, make sure you've got them budgets in place and stick to them. Talk to yourself, write down in your notes, your notebook, wherever. What's important to you this Christmas? What do you want to tick off? What do you want to do? Do you really need to go out to eat once a week? Make sure that you're doing what you want to do, ticking them off and your money's going to the important places. That way you are having the best of both worlds. And you can also, you know, make sure you're saving money when you 
are doing those things. Make sure you're using cash back. Make sure you're budgeting for them. Book in advance. Schedule what you're doing so you can get the most for your money. I love that. And I especially love when you said, you know, reviewing how you're spending. So, you know, do you need to go out and eat every week? Because it's something that my friends and I have also been fully aware of. Because I think you find when you go to meet people, quite often, you know, meet up with friends and then you're going out. And before you know, you spent £40 on your bill. Whereas if you're more aware of it because you want to stick to your financial goals, maybe you say, you know what, I want to meet up with you, but let's go for a coffee. Or let's go for a walk instead. And I think that's some of the changes that a lot of people are making. So it's like, you don't have to compromise. You can still have, like you said, the good Christmas, but we can also still 100% stick to our financial goals. Yeah, you don't have to compromise definitely. anything. And when you're going out, you know, you don't always have to go to these fancy places. You can go to somewhere that's cheap, that's cheerful. It's good for everybody. And if people are drinking and you're not, or they're... They want to have star and main dessert. Just open up your separate tab. You don't have to split the bill. And it doesn't have to be an awkward conversation about splitting the bill. Just say, look, I'm not drinking today or I'm only having a small starter. So I'm going to open up my own tab. It doesn't have to be a big thing at the end of the meal where you're like, oh, you know, someone's getting out the calculator, that bit that, you know, everybody dreads. Say at the beginning of the meal, right, I'm going to open up my own tab because I'm not drinking tonight. It doesn't have to be an awkward conversation. It can be really easy, really simple. And that's the best way to keep it. Yep, I'm 100% behind you on that because I'm someone very much so. Sometimes we go out and I'm happy to split. Sometimes I'm not hungry. And I will tell my friends or whoever I'm with, guys, I'm just going to pay for my one thing because I'm only getting one thing. And, you know, I, I don't feel bad about having that conversation at least people know now okay that's how we're going to split the bill key is not part of that so whatever I get now I split between whoever's agreed upon it and it, it makes things easier I went for a meal once and I don't drink and everybody was ordering cocktails and we was in a really nice restaurant that were like £12 each and someone ordered um, lobster which of course is very expensive and I was thinking, I'm not drinking. I had a really cheap main. I am not splitting this bill. And I just said, I'm going to open up my own tab because I've had a really cheap main. I'm not drinking. It was like, fine. And I think as long as you keep it simple, don't beat around the bush with it. It's absolutely fine. But it's about the conversations you're having and the people you're around. You don't need to spend loads to have a good time. Exactly. I love Christmas. It brings a spirit. You get to be with your loved ones. That's oh, it. My favourite time of the year. They're not get lying. Get the I love games. It. That's what I love. Yeah. Oh, I love the games and the food. Oh, and the food. All of that. I'm getting excited now. So I'm getting ahead <laughs> of myself. Okay. So let's talk about the environment. What is the environmental impact of all of this? How does pulling back on consumerism help? It helps in so many different ways, you know, the sustainability aspect of it, the amount of things that end up in landfill, the amount of things that end up just cluttering your own house without talking about the environmental impact. We all end up with so much stuff and we say, we haven't used that. Why did they buy me that? I think we've all got a present where we like, what am I going to do with this? And it's being more mindful and thoughtful about the things that you're buying people as well. Like you mentioned, if you've got them budgets thinking about what does that person really want? And if we're more mindful about it, then we end up buying things that are actually going to be used, which has an impact on our wallets, on the environment, on other people's clutter and decluttering. So it has major impacts in so many different areas. Absolutely. I think one thing that I also do is I ask people, like, what is it that you actually want? Because Think of how many times, I'm sure you've had it, I definitely have had it, where you've received the gift and you're like, I cannot stand this. <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Yeah. The person didn't even think about what this gift is and now you're probably thinking about regifting it or you never use it and it does just kind of clutter up. But I think when you do have that conversation with someone, I mean, it's not spoiling it. You can get people to write on a list. Yeah. You can kind of pick from that list so it's still got a, like an air of surprise to it. But then at least you're buying something that the person's going to use or value. Let's talk about gifting then. Does expensive always mean better or are there other approaches that people can take when it comes to gift giving? Expensive doesn't always mean better. I guess it depends what you're buying. Um, but there's so many alternatives out there now. You know, there's never just one of one product. There's so many different jewellery brands, you know, phone brands, that sort of thing. And there's dupes as well out there now. You can always get a cheaper alternative. So expensive doesn't always mean better. 
it's different if someone's asked for a specific brand or something like that. But always make sure you're shopping around. Never just take the first price you see because nine times out of ten, it's not the best. And making sure you're looking for discount codes and that sort of stuff, using cash back where possible. Uh, because if you are making an expensive purchase, you can still get some money back that way. I love that cash back, discount codes, all of those things. So, Megan, it's Black Friday this week. And that's a time where some people may be thinking, I'm going to get all of my Christmas presents on that day because so many deals coming out. So I want to ask you, is it actually a good deal? Should people spend their money and use Black Friday as an opportunity or should people maybe hold back a bit? I don't think you should hold back, but I also don't think you should rely on it. You've got to remember that these days are put out there for people to spend. They're not there for people to save, they're there for people to spend. And it is a good day to check deals, but purely to check deals and make sure you actually are getting a good deal because sometimes... The prices are hiked up in the weeks upcoming so they can be pulled down on that day and actually everyone thinks they're getting a good deal but it's not a good deal. So make sure you are shopping around, look and see if you are actually getting a good deal. And also remember, it's not a saving if you didn't need it anyway. You're actually just spending. So make sure you stick to your list. Don't just get pulled in to all of these good deals and offers that you're seeing. Get rid of the triggers if you need to. Unsubscribe from them emails. Unfollow people on Instagram if you need to. If you're struggling for money especially and you know that you're going to be triggered by black. Black Friday, get rid of any triggers. You don't need to spend if there's something that you don't need. I absolutely agree with you. When it comes to Black Friday, I mean, I very rarely shop on those days anyway, you know, Cyber Monday, those kind of days. But when it comes to Black Friday or the lead up to it, I use price trackers. So certain websites will have a tracker, you know, some of the big websites, and you can actually say, right, I'm looking at this product and yeah. it will track the price of it and you can also look at historical prices so you can see was it hiked up like you said the week before and now it's just coming back to the original price or is there actually a saving if I wanted to buy it if you get into that habit you can definitely make sure you're getting the best price yeah. for anything you're buying yeah 100% finally Megan what three tips do you have for our listeners as they look ahead to Christmas to help them get a little bit richer I've mentioned it so many times, but the first one is definitely being open and honest, having them conversations with people around you. Nobody's going to know unless you tell them. You've got to be open and honest. The second one will be never take that first price you see. Shop around, make it a habit. Get into the habit of, you know, looking for cash back, looking for discount codes, having a look on even Facebook groups and things like that. And the third one is get a little bit creative. You know, my nan, for example, she's got everything that she needs, absolutely everything that she needs. And I know that whatever I buy her, she's not going to use. So I get creative. I make her hampers. I buy her experiences instead. And that can be a lot more thoughtful for the person that you're buying for, but also be a bit easier on your pocket as well. I love that. That is so thoughtful. Yeah, it makes you really think about what the person will value. So, yeah. Megan, thank you so much. This has been a great episode and really gotten us into the Christmas spirit. I'm feeling Christmassy. I'm feeling Christmassy. I'm ready. I'm ready for <laughs> I'm Christmas I'm ready to day. go Christmas shopping now. I'm, I'm ready for everything. I'm ready to look at the food, everything. I'm ready for the food. Oh, I'm, we're getting too excited. We're getting <laughs> too excited. Let's not buy presents and yeah. let's just buy food. Buy food. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that, honestly. <laughs> thank you so much. This thank you. It's been a great episode. Next week, I'm returning to a topic we looked at earlier in the series, house buying. I want to focus specifically on the cost of buying your first home and how to save. And don't worry, the words avocado and toast are officially banned, I promise. But while you wait, you know the drill. Hit follow and leave a review. Happy Christmas!